Thank you for joining me. Right now here in the basement, I asked the world's smartest supercomputer about central bank digital currencies, and you'll be surprised what it told me. But then I had the audacity to ask that same computer, are CBDCs evil? And it gave yet another surprising answer. And what's on top of all of our minds as we approach the impending implementation of central bank digital currencies? What's going to happen to precious metals? What's going to happen to gold coins, silver coins? I have a strong opinion I want to share with you. Let's talk about what the supercomputer had to say right now. Central bank digital currencies, or CBDCs, are digital versions of a country's fiat currency, such as the United States dollar or the euro, that are issued and backed by the central bank. We love our central banks, don't we? One of the main advantages of CBDCs is that they could potentially increase the efficiency and security of financial transactions. For example, a CBDC could be used to make instant payments or to settle cross-border transactions in real time, which would be faster and cheaper than traditional methods. Additionally, because CBDCs are issued and backed by our beloved central banks, they would be less susceptible to fraud. Yeah, the governments and the central banks, they don't do anything related to fraud or hacking than traditional digital currencies such as Bitcoin. The supercomputer said that, not me. Another potential benefit of CBDCs is that they could help promote financial inclusion by making it easier for people who are currently unbanked or underbanked to access financial services. In addition, CBDCs could be used to help stabilize the economy during times of crisis. Yeah, they wouldn't have to actually print anything. They could just digitally print it, such as a recession, by providing a new source of liquidity. Despite these potential benefits, there are also some concerns about CBDCs. For example, some people worry that CBDCs could lead to increased government surveillance and a loss of privacy as central banks would have access to detailed information about financial transactions. Additionally, some experts warn that CBDCs could destabilize the financial system by making it easier for banks to fail and by reducing the need for bank deposits. At present, several central banks are conducting research and pilot projects on the potential implementation of CBDCs, including the PBOC, the People's Bank of China. They call it the PBOC. It sounds fun to say, PBOC the European Central Bank, and the Bank of Japan. However, it is still uncertain when or if any of these central banks will actually issue a CBDC. In conclusion, the central bank digital currencies have the potential to increase the efficiency and security of financial transactions, promote financial inclusion, and stabilize the economy during times of crisis. However, there are also concerns about the potential for increased government surveillance and the destabilization of the financial system. Central banks are currently exploring the potential of CBDCs, but it is still uncertain when or if any of them will actually issue a CBDC. So what did you learn from that? From the supercomputer, ChatGPT, does it sound a little bit to you like maybe Big Brother might be coming for us? I don't know. I'll leave it up to you to draw your own conclusion. But next, I had the audacity on your behalf to ask the supercomputer, are CBDCs inherently evil? And this is exactly what he or she or it had to say. Ron, it's not accurate to say that central bank digital currencies are inherently evil. CBDCs are a form of digital currency issued and backed by central bank, and they have the potential to offer a number of benefits, such as increased financial inclusion, that's such a catchword these days, and greater security and efficiency in transactions. However, 
Like any technology, the way in which CBDCs are implemented and used, I'm sure our government and central banks will just do a great job of that, can have both positive and negative effects. It is important to consider the specific design and implementation of a CBDC, as well as its potential impact on privacy, security, and monetary policy before you make any type of judgment about the overall value. All right, that's it, that settles it. I think the supercomputer did a pretty good job, but what about precious metals in this new CBDC environment that we're gonna be moving into? Don't you get the feeling that CBDC implementation could actually be really good for precious metals? Because think about it. If people don't have cash that they can stick under their mattress or put in an envelope up in the attic to have around for emergencies, cash is going to be worthless, right? Because it's all going to be converted to digital CBDC. What's the last thing left that you could hold on to for a rainy day, for an emergency? How about some silver coins? How about a gold coin or two? I think that the implementation of CBDCs could very well generate a huge wave of demand for precious metals. Doesn't it make sense to us, whether you're talking about digital dollars, digital euros, confederate dollars, tulip bulbs, any of the fiat currencies that have come and gone, whether they're paper, digital, whatever people have come up with to temporarily assign value, silver and gold for thousands of years have always consistently perfectly consistently held their value over all those years and everywhere in the world. The other key thing to think about when it comes to CBDCs being implemented, and let's say coins, look, you know, if coins are like outlawed and no longer produced, we're going to still have a number of decades where people will want to have coins. Coins will become more collectible, right? There will no longer be a new supply coming onto the market. So that could potentially, from a pneumostatic perspective, be very good for people who own silver sovereign coins in particular or gold coins as well. One thing for sure, it's going to be really, really interesting as we move into the coming what, three, four years, five years, when a lot of this will be implemented, I think there's a real bright future for the precious metals, for the sovereign coins. We're going to find out. I will be here for you through it all. I'll look forward to seeing you next time.